Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're taking a look at this old PC specialist gaming system that I found on eBay for £130. I think that's roughly $165 at the time of this video in the US. So this old thing apparently has an i7-5820K and I've wanted one of those old high-end i7s for ages so I thought why don't I take the plunge, purchase this second-hand system and see what the rest of the specs are inside because one of the things I noted or thought about at the time was that if we had an old X99 motherboard they can sometimes be worth the same as what this system costs even now so I thought even if the other specs aren't that good we've at least got a motherboard that's worth something and we've got a system that we can continue to try out with the latest and greatest game releases just to see how an old six core chip holds up so let's confirm what we've got crack this thing open test the specs work out what graphics card we have because that was a detail that was left out of the item listing and then try a few games if this thing can even handle that. Now you guys know me, I'm usually inclined to sort of undo these PCs out in the garden, test the specs that way, uh, but unfortunately it seems like summer has completely missed England because for the past few weeks we've just had rain despite what the weather forecast has said. So let's go ahead, see what we've got first of all. We de- mm. This is the stuff of nightmares. I don't even need to look any closer at this to tell you that I think this is a GeForce GT 710. If not, it's a GeForce 610. If not, it's a GeForce 210. So either way, we're dealing with some pretty terrible hardware there. We've got this chunky old Intel stock cooler. I absolutely love these. From what I recall, there's a couple of blue LEDs in here as well so when we turn the system on those should light up everything is powered by a Corsair VS450 which I don't think is the best um, it will give the GT710 no problems of course but I think for a more powerful GPU we do have a PCIe connector but it's not the best unit to put something more powerful in here something that would really work well with the 5820k assuming that's what's actually under there I'm also seeing an SSD here, which is nice as well as a traditional hard drive plus a DVD drive up there so everything you'd expect from a PC of this age which dates to around I want to say 2014 so perhaps originally this would have had a GTX 900 series card in a 970 a 980 perhaps and I'm thinking that along the way it's been swapped out for this lesser GPU either that or the graphics card was just spec this way because they wanted processing power and didn't really need that much in the way of GPU power. Now the X99 platform, socket 2011, I think that the i7-5820K belongs to, was one of the first to use DDR4. So we've got two sticks of DDR4 memory in here. I'll have a few close-up shots to confirm everything, which I'll add in the edit, of course. But I'm also particularly keen on the cable management here. Everything is very neat. The wires have been sort of well tucked aside. I do like the way this has been built. This was probably put together in 2014 and not much has been changed since. So the PSU has probably been chugging away since then. PC specialist, at least in my experience, have always been very neat with the jobs that they do with their PCs. Every secondhand PC specialist build I've come across is generally quite well put together and it's certainly stood the test of time in that regard. I think what we'll do now then is power this on, see if it works and try and play some games. Now as I said before I really like this old platform, never had much experience with it but I thought if this system works we can keep the motherboard and we can keep the CPU to test in the newly released games because although this was a serious high end piece of enthusiast kit back in the day I think it'll be interesting to see how it holds up. So the system has booted up, as you can see the blue LEDs have switched on on that beefy stock cooler. We have gone straight into Windows, which I'm hoping has been restored and installed on the included SSD. Looks like it by the speed in which it booted there. 
it's definitely been restored to factory settings as well. So the i7 5820K is a 140 watt TDP CPU, 6 cores and 12 threads, so it should still be somewhat capable. Yeah, the memory is running in dual channel mode and this supports quad channel, so I think if we installed more RAM in this eventually, we would get better performance from this chip and it would certainly help out, I think, in 2023. We do also have the GT710, I can confirm that using GPU-Z here. We've got the 1 gig DDR3 version. Luckily, it is the Kepler version with the higher core count because there is a Fermi 710, a much older GPU with about 48 cores, something like that, and it will be a lot worse than this one, that's for sure. Now, believe it or not, there is a worse version of the GT710 than the GT710 we have, and if you opt for very low settings at lower resolutions, then this card can still play some games with close to 60 FPS, but it's gonna be titles like CSGO here, which will run fine at the lowest settings, though the occasional dips and drops may put you off a little bit. The CPU is sitting back doing nothing here, the 5820K. I think the CPU power reading from the MSI Afterburner and Reva Tuna statistics overlay is wrong because we are certainly using more than 0.7 watts of power. I don't know what has happened there. We're boosting to about 3.9. I think there's some sort of um, automatic overclock feature as part of this X99A ASUS motherboard so I think that's why we're boosting higher than the turbo listed on Intel's site. Pretty extensive BIOS with the X99A motherboard as well. I've seen these go for about £120 on eBay. The models I've seen recently are listed at over 100 as well so whether or not they actually sell at that price is a different story but it's nice to know the motherboard is technically worth almost what I paid for the PC. I even managed to run GTA 5 on this thing. Again, the CPU is sitting back doing nothing. The one gig GT710 is pretty stressed, I have to say. We could go lower, we could opt for half resolution scaling, but the game is going to turn into a blurry mess. Older games are definitely better suited to something like the 710, and on sort of closer inspection, and when I really think about it, I think this was spec'd with a 710 originally. I think whoever requested this PC was more CPU focused because Judging by the, C, uh, the PSU cables and the way they're cable tied to the rest of the chassis, it looks like they, they haven't really been used. The PCI Express cables haven't really been used. But again, this, the PSU could have been an upgrade later on down the line. For the 710 gameplay, I'll end with Fortnite, which with its performance mode also runs and is, to be honest, somewhat playable. So I know the 710 gets laughed at a lot, but it does have its uses, especially if you have the Kepler version or you have one of the newer 2 gig GDDR5 versions. Not always worth their price, brand new, that's for sure, but if you can get a really cheap one used, they do still have their uses, though. Gaming probably isn't one of those for most titles out there. Now, in terms of the actual CPU side of things, the 5820K, judging by the Cinebench score and from what I've seen with other processors, you're looking at about sort of first gen 6 core Ryzen performance, 1600, 1600X, somewhere around there. Uh, perhaps the i5 9400F as well, somewhere around there. It will still do okay, but I wouldn't recommend paying too much for one, nor would I recommend paying too much for one of these motherboards, because I think if you are just looking at it from a perspective of buying something cheap that's going to offer decent performance in games for not much money, you could just get a cheap AM4 board and a first or second gen Ryzen and get similar, perhaps even better performance than you'd get with a system like this. The thing is though, because the 5820K is still somewhat capable, you can pair it with a modern sort of entry level mid range card, something like the 3050 or 6600. I wouldn't go much higher than that because the CPU will be a bottleneck, but you can pair it with one of those and have a pretty decent experience. I ran through a few more modern titles with the 3050 in the system. I did sort of regret or I did feel a bit risky pairing the 3050 with the 450 watt PSU included with this unit. I don't know how long it's been in use and I don't know how reliable it really is. I've read a few things that don't fill me with too much confidence, 
but the 3050 seemed to work with this power supply just fine, at least short term. I don't think there was too much to worry about here, considering the card uses a single 8-pin connector. But yeah, some games were quite surprising. Big AAA releases like Spider-Man and Cyberpunk ran okay. The usual dips and drops were present, which is what you can expect when using an older CPU. Um, but apart from that, I think we'll have to find out what's best for a chip like this, maybe overclock it a little bit more and then compare it to a few more modern options. But I think for the money, I've got a pretty decent PC here. This is something I've wanted for a long time, so perhaps I'm being a bit biased, but yeah, I've finally got an X99 Socket 2011 platform PC and I plan to have a lot more fun with it. So thanks for watching. This has been what's inside my used PC specialist build. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know what potential upgrades you'd like to see. I'm sure Quad Channel RAM would probably be one of those. And uh, hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.